Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Muller here. Thanks for joining me for this edition of Meteo Mark's Weather Tropical Edition. Hurricane Lee spinning just west of Bermuda as a Category 1 with major wind radius here. Look at this. This is The wind field's just going to continue to expand as this system goes to the north. So don't just focus on the center of circulation as this thing moves to the north towards eastern New England, New Brunswick, and Nova Scotia. We'll get into all the details and impacts here. Our next system behind it, this could actually invest 97 7L become Tropical Storm Nigel. And yes, this system could actually become a hurricane and approach right where Lee is right now. Let's get into it. And as we take a look at the satellite view of uh, Hurricane Lee here, look at this. There's the eye. It's almost looking that extra tropical look. Look at that void of major showers and thunderstorms here on the east side. That's a blessing there for uh, Bermuda. But the bad news is the wind field is getting bigger with this storm. So yeah, it won't start to transition to extra tropical until it gets right in line up here uh, with Cape Cod. But there it is. The structure is looking rather interesting and it continues to expand as it heads north. All right. So before we continue here, I want to make alert that yes, my sound is on the fritz. It's not as clear and nice as it usually sounds. I know one or two of you mentioned that last video. So I'm in the process of trying to figure out what exactly it is, but let's get this information out here. Thanks for sticking with me. Let's take a look. Lee continues barreling towards the north here on our European model. You can see as we zoom in here, look at this, the cl higher cloud tops there. Yeah, it's actually on the west side. This is actually going to start resembling more of a nor'easter rather than and a more extra tropical rather than a hurricane. So that's hence why you have on the northwest side here all that convection. And on the east side, you seem a little bit avoid of it here. That's kind of interesting. But nevertheless, as the system barrels towards the north, don't just focus on the center of circulation. You're going to have landfall. Yes, eastern Maine, especially New Brunswick here right into the Bay of Fundy and then here in southwestern Nova Scotia. But if we just back this up a couple frames here, take a look at this. Yeah, Cape Cod, Rhode Island, eastern Massachusetts, eastern uh, New Hampshire here into Maine. You're going to see some impacts here. Heed those tropical storm warnings, watches, and even some hurricane watches and warnings as well. This thing starts barreling ashore towards 5 p.m. on the 16th. So it's actually moving a little bit faster here on the European model. Instead of landfall on the 17th, it looks like it's going to start here on the 16th. And as we continue towards the north here, look at this. 8 p.m. on the 16th, this kind of barrels right into the Bay of Fundy. St. John, yeah, I'm worried about some water rises in here. You know, the water can potentially funnel up here uh, right around Nova Scotia as well. So watch out for that. I'm very concerned. The only good thing is this thing will start to accelerate. So, the, you know, the heaviest rain, yeah, we'll get some heavy rain, flooding, flash flooding out of this. But look at by 11 a.m. on Sunday morning, the 17th. Yeah, this thing's all the way cruising up northeast of New Brunswick by this point. So that's kind of crazy. Look what's going on, though. You have a little bit of a spiral of moisture here over here in Newfoundland. So we're going to continue to watch for that. You know, this thing has a lot of wind and a lot of rain, surge, waves with this. And look at that. By the 18th, this thing's cruising into the North Atlantic. So what's going on with Invest 97L here? So yeah, this system's going to be cruising to the northwest here as we get into the 17th the 18th, the 19th, and then look how it blows up. Yeah, this thing's becoming a potential hurricane, maybe Hurricane Nigel. Now look what's going on during this time. You have an area of high pressure here off the East Coast, right out another subtropical high. Then you still have uh, our other hurricane out here. It's still Margo. It's still going around in circles out here. And what's that going to play into with the storm? Look at it. It ends up right over Bermuda. Not to say this is going to hit Bermuda head on, but this is kind of concerning. Look at that. And showing this recurving out into the open Atlantic with a massive low. It's being attracted by this massive low pressure system winding up right over the North Atlantic. And look at this. Another storm forming behind that right where it was before. And look at that. That looks like it's taking a track northwest as well. All right. So as we take a look at your wind speed here, look at this. Look at this massive wind field. This is huge. Even though this is not a major hurricane, this wind is going to be expanding the wind field as we get towards Friday into Saturday. Look at this. This kind of looks scary. Uh, not to scare you or anything, but this is a massive radius of winds. And as we get towards 11 a.m. on Saturday morning, look at this. This is this is pretty intense. This is a, the, a, the wind field here. 
from Cape Cod up to Maine, Nova Scotia, and eventually New Brunswick here. Look at this. The core of the strongest winds is very concerning, right southwestern part here of Nova Scotia, and that heads into the Bay of Fundy by 11 p.m., on Saturday night. So keep an eye on this. This is not looking very good at all. If we take a look at the wind field here on our hurricane model, HWRF, there you can see the center circulation, the eye, the calm of the storm. Look at this here towards 10 a.m., 8 a.m. on Saturday. Here it is. Here's the wind field. Even clipping Cape Cod's going to get battered as well as Eastern Maine. Look at this. But I just wanted to show you the center circulation. Look where it's headed. It's heading right it heads just to right to the west of southwestern Nova Scotia, and it makes a turn, there's the center, right towards St. John. So if you're in these areas, beware. That's the Bay of Fundy right there. This is not looking very good. So as we take a look at the simulated infrared satellite, it really gives us a good idea of how big this storm's going to continue to blow up. It looks a lot more subtropical here. Look at this. Yeah. You can see the east side void of any convection. It's the northwest side that's really convective. That is crazy. Look at that. That's going to continue towards the north as we head towards Saturday. That is looking like, yeah, that's extra tropical by that point, heading right up into St. John there. So here's our future radar, essentially, of Lee on the HWRF hurricane model, heading a little east of guidance as we get through Friday here. But it does kick back towards the west in response to that stronger high to the northeast. And look at this. There it is showing landfall. Not quite yet. Still just west of Yarmouth here, southwestern part of Nova Scotia. But look at this as we get right into the Bay of Fundy. That is the, I, I hate to say this, but it's St. John here. This thing's going to be moving the center right up through. Looks like landfall is between, yeah, it's right around, I would say, 10 p.m. there in St. John. All right, so the GFS model, let's compare here. Let's compare the notes to the European model. So here it is. We'll just do a bird's eye view initially here. There it is. Category 1 storm. It's a massive storm, though, so do not underestimate this storm. Any of you that are in this path of the storm, please take it seriously, because look how massive. Look at these tropical storm force winds, then hurricane force winds, and then, yeah, this is this is tremendous wind field here, and this is going to move a lot of water, too. Look at as we get towards 11 p.m. Friday evening. That is crazy. Look how big this storm is. Now, the GFS is taking this a bit farther to the east, more in line with guidance. The European is just slightly to the west here. But this is interesting because as we get towards, say, 8 a.m. on the 16th, which is Saturday morning, by the way, it's moving right into the Bay of Fundy here. Yeah, this is the same exact area that the European does. So it kind of skips it just to the west of guidance by Saturday morning. And St. John, I hate to say it, but you're looking like the... Ground zero here. Look at this. This is uh, 8 p.m. There it is. 11 p.m. Saturday night. So it's not going to be a very good Saturday night if you're in eastern Maine, New Brunswick here, and southwestern Nova Scotia. This is not good. This is going to move a lot of water, a lot of wind. Going to be moving up into your area. Now look at the good news. It does start to accelerate very rapidly. But yeah, it's got a very large circulation to it. Invest 97L behind it. Here's Hurricane Margo as well. High pressure continuing to protect the Azores at this time. We'll see how long that can last, though. That's something we definitely got to keep an eye on. But look at this. As we go in time, yeah, Hurricane Margo is going to weaken to a tropical storm. It will affect the Azores, it looks like, around the 20th here. So keep an eye on that. We'll keep an eye on it here as well. But here is our next potential hurricane, potentially Nigel. GFS is remaining the most optimistic, keeping it east of Bermuda and recurving it until we get to about 2 a.m. on the 24th and then zipping it up there into the North Atlantic. Now, as we take a look at the rest of the Caribbean here, Gulf of Mexico. Gulf of Mexico looks, oh, look at this out here. Just want to make note, this is the 27th of September. This is really far out, but look at that. Look what it's showing out here. It's showing a major hurricane right where Lee was northeast of the Leeward Islands. So let's just back it up a bit here. We'll take a look at the Caribbean. Is there anything to worry about out here? 17th, the 18th, the 19th, the 20th. We do get some showers in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands by the 21st and 22nd. We'll watch out here into Central America as well, up towards Belize. Belize is getting a little dry here. Look at the Gulf of Mexico, though. Clear as a bell up here. So we'll continue to watch for any tropical systems. We do have a tropical wave approaching here 
uh, the Lesser Antilles, Trinidad and Tobago by the 26th. So thanks to Tropical Tidbits for this mid-layer dry air analysis. We'll take a look at the whole Atlantic here. Look at this, 960, 959 millibars. That is nothing to sneeze at here into the North Atlantic. Look at this, right off the East Coast. It is headed right towards southeast Canada. You can see on the east side that dry air wrapping around. That's why I think the extra tropical transition will continue prior to landfall here Saturday night. So look at that as we head towards Saturday evening here, Saturday afternoon. 967 millibars, 972 as it heads right into the Bay of Fundy there. It looks like that is the ground zero point and that system becoming, it's definitely extra tropical by this point. There's our system behind it potentially Nigel. There it is right over Bermuda by the 22nd. But look at that high pressure off the east coast. That's keeping it cruising towards the northeast between these two high pressure systems. There's our next system out in the MDR by the 24th. So here's total liquid equivalent precipitation here across the northeast. It is basically we're dealing with, yeah, this behind it is that next system. But if we just back it up here, you can see it's mostly Maine. The good news is, you know, the worst of it seems to be just an extreme eastern Maine. You're still going to get upwards in this red zone, you know, three, four inches. And then here into the yellow and oranges, four to six, maybe seven inches locally higher. So let's get that rainfall here in uh, southeast Canada. It actually doesn't look as bad because the acceleration point of the storm keeps this, you know, the storm on a good uh, move towards the northeast once it makes landfall. So, yeah, you're looking these reds and some of these borderline yellows, it might be the fact that this storm's moving so fast after it makes landfall that we're not going to see many areas beyond, say, 100 millimeters. Although I'm a little bit wary of that because, you know, it's such a large system. So my my analysis here would kind of tend to agree with like 100, 125 millimeters, which would be a solid four to seven, you know, four to six inches, I think, would be a, a safe bet here, especially in New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. So heading into the Caribbean here, take a look at this. Jamaica, all the way to the Cayman Islands. So we head through Sunday. You're going to get some showers here upwards of 13, maybe 22 millimeters. About a half to three quarters of an inch, inch terms. Look at here into the south central part of the Caribbean. That's where the big rainfalls are. As we get towards the middle to latter part of next week, look at this. We're piling up 60 to 90 millimeters of rain here in Jamaica through the Cayman Islands. That's going to be a solid two to potentially three inches. As we continue through the following week into the 29th and 30th, look what's going on here. I think the Caribbean's really going to start to open up here for tropical waves in excess of over 100 millimeters of rainfall. All right, so as we head to the Eastern Caribbean, here is the Lesser Antilles as we continue the, look at that, Trinidad, Tobago, all the way up to the Virgin Islands. This is through the 23rd and the 21st. We still don't get anything here until we get towards, say, the 27th and 28th with that next tropical wave. Then we start to pile on 70 to close to 100 millimeters of rainfall, which would be a solid three to four inches of rain. So our HRRR future radar model, here it is as we head through the end of the week here. Look at that high pressure there in the east, except Georgia there. Look at that big smattering of showers and thunderstorms for 10 a.m. on Friday morning. But there is Lee just off the coast. Watch what the HRRR future radar does with Lee here. So yeah, as we get towards... Look at that. Yeah, let's back that up just a little bit. So as we get right in line with 10 p.m. on Friday evening, look, at you start to see the outer bands in Nantucket here. There's the outer cloudiness here showing up quite readily. And look at that. As we head towards 5 a.m. Saturday morning, look at that all the way through Boston, Worcester. Yeah, this uh, mesoscale model trending this low just a little bit to the west here. So that's why we still have to keep just a little bit eye. Still think it's going to head you know, just to the northeast after this. But look at this. Yeah, this is a lot of rain and wind showing up here for New England. All right, so as we take a look at North American weather, yes, this includes my Canadian friends up here as well. So we're going to take a look at your weather here. Let's put this into motion. As we continue, let's get a timestamp there. There it is. Thank you. It is September 15th, Friday at 5 a.m. Look at that. High pressure is controlling southeastern and eastern Canada. We're still dealing with Lee over here. We're waiting for Lee in New Brunswick at Nova Scotia during this time. But look at this. We got an area of low pressure heading right across central and northern Ontario. That's going to bring some showers and thunder showers. And look at this. We got an area here 
come Sunday into the Appalachians that's going to promote showers and thunderstorm action as well. So they're going to have to keep an eye on that as we continue to go out here in time. Look at that. That kind of moves up the East Coast here uh, towards the 18th and 19th just behind Lee. So as Lee is heading out of the picture, we're actually bringing some showers and thunderstorm action here into parts of the Mid-Atlantic. And we'll have to keep an eye on that. Look at that. That's the 18th at 5 a.m. So as we're waking up Monday morning, we might be waking up to some gully washers there in the Hudson Valley and Catskill region. That moves up over towards New England and Quebec here. So we're going to have another area of low pressure across central Canada. It's looking pretty quiet across the lower 48 of the United States here, though. It looks like most of the action is going to be in Canada until we get to about, let's see, where was that time stamp on the 20th here? Take a look at that. We get... This low pressure, it almost looks like a Colorado low. We could be looking at some severe weather developing across the central and southern plains, something we haven't seen in quite a while. And look at this. We're just going to start lining up the systems here across central Canada and eastern Canada. Big severe weather outbreak around Dallas as we get towards the 21st here. But look at that high pressure here across the east. That is going to bring in some beautiful late summer weather here across the Ohio Valley into parts of the northeast. And as we continue in cruising in time here, look at these thunderstorm complexes as we head across south Canada into the upper Midwest here. And look at this. All the way up into northwestern provinces of Canada, we have a big system up here that we'll have to keep an eye on. More severe weather across the southern central uh, Canadian plains as well with this system. Look at this, yeah. This high pressure is pretty much blocking the system here into the Midwest, into parts of south central Canada. That's going to bring some big time thunderstorms north of Thunder Bay up towards Dryden, north of International Falls here as well. So that's something we're going to have to keep an eye on as we go in time. I am proud to announce that I am now an affiliate with Trilogy Maps. TrilogyMaps.com bringing you the most digital, customizable maps found nowhere else on the internet. These maps are simply stunning. It's an advanced layering system that makes these maps great for making forecast maps with ease or any other maps that you would like like to display important information on. The resolution on these maps is simply amazing. From the detail of everything here in the States, and you can also create stunning digital professional layered maps from also across the entire world. And don't forget in checkout, the discount code option, use my code MEDIOMARK, hit apply, and you will get 20% off your order. So if you want the most professional, customizable, and affordable weather maps found nowhere else on the internet, look no further than TrilogyMaps.com. Link in the description down below along with your discount code. As always, thanks for joining me for this edition of Media Marks Weather. Take a look at my Facebook page at Media Mark, also Weather Northeastern, also Hurricane Northeastern to follow the tropics. And if you want to hop over to my Twitter page, it's at Weather Eastern. It's MediaMark.com. Thanks for joining me question or comment down below subscribe if you haven't already hit that bell notification button so you're alerted when a video comes out